Okay, Lisa, I'm ready for you. Do you think this article was ghostwritten? I'm pretty sure it was. I only asked because I was at this book release party and I was casually talking to the woman next to me at the bar and after a few minutes of back and forth, I was like, so what do you do? And she said, I wrote the book we're celebrating. I said, but you're not the author. And then she said, I'm the ghostwriter. I was shocked. So I asked her, do you mind not getting any of the credit for your work? And she said, not as long as my name is on the check. Ghostwriting is a pretty ballsy career choice. You do all of the work, but you don't get any of the fame, the press, or the praise. I mean, that's kind of the best part of writing a book, right? The fame. How else are you gonna meet Oprah? Now you all know I love a good book. New York Times best-selling author. The next big thing in literature. Ghostwriting fascinates me because throughout history, in every industry, women have done a lot of the work, but haven't exactly gotten the credit for it. Study after study after study shows that women get less credit than men in the workplace, as if you needed a study to tell you that. But female ghostwriters are essentially monetizing this dynamic of doing all of the work and not getting any of the credit. And they are making bank. So obviously I had to reach out to a ghostwriter to find out more. So I sat down with New York Times and Amazon bestselling ghostwriter, Jody Lipper. Throughout history, women have done the majority of the work but not gotten the credit, and there's studies to show that this happens still today. How does that affect you in your industry? Because I feel like that's such a unique position for you yeah. in ghostwriting. Well, first of all, I work with a lot of female authors. I also work with a lot of authors who are people of color, and I really make an effort to find those people and help get their voices out there. That's really important to me. So I feel good about that. Some of the male ghostwriters who are at the top of the field do fight more for cover credit the, with so-and-so, more so than some of the top female ghostwriters. And this is really a female-dominated field. A lot of the top writers out there are women. The men that I talk to the most that are in this field don't call themselves ghostwriters at all. What and do they call themselves? Collaborative writers or co-writers. And they're the ones who more often do get credit. So. How about how many books do you write a year? What's like an average number? I'd say the average has been about two to three. That's amazing. So you're banging out two to three a year. Yeah. Do you get credit for that number of books? Because that's a lot of writing. No, I, I get paid for each one, but that's it. <laughs> so of the New York Times bestseller list, mm -hmm. how many are ghostwritten, would you say? You for, don't have to name names. For nonfiction, I would say almost all, probably. <gasps> I think most people would be shocked, but within the industry, it's not a secret at all. People know that anyone with a big enough platform to sell that many books, yeah. they've got a lot of help. One thing that fascinates me about ghostwriting is that women have monetized the idea of doing all of the work, but getting none of the credit. Are you guys making bank? If you want a very experienced ghostwriter who's gonna deliver something that's really polished and ready to be published, mm -hmm it's gonna cost you. And to me, it's not about getting credit and having my name on the book, it's about knowing that I've helped them tell their story. I feel that I get credit for my contributions by the author, by the editor, by the people who know what I do and who work with me. My brand is not having a brand. My brand is being able to capture other authors' voices, so I think that's a big part of actually the skill set of being a ghostwriter, is that ability to connect with different people, because yeah. you have to, earn that trust. Your brand um, is anti-brand. My brand is anti-brand. I don't feel right. the need to have like a public brand. Right. What's the hot gossip in the Ghostwriter <laughs> Network? What's going the on? hot gossip is really how can we elevate this profession? Some ghostwriters would say that we have the hardest job in the publishing industry. We have to make the author happy. We have to make the editor happy. And if there's ever a conflict between an editor and an author or an agent and an author, the ghostwriter can get caught in the middle and kind of blamed if things go yeah. downhill. Yeah. And that is definitely um, a negative yeah. side to this job. <laughs> I'd say. So that's probably the biggest gossip is just how can we elevate this and protect ourselves so that we have more control over our lives and our careers and we're not kind of getting thrown under the bus if someone else doesn't do their job. So what advice would you give for young women who want to be writers but don't necessarily know what path to take to make that a sustainable career choice? I would just want them to know that this is an option. It's something that people don't really know about because it is so secret and hidden. Um, but meanwhile, it's a lucrative career that's 
I would say strictly creative. It's just writing. That's something that's really important for women who want a career. As a kid, I had such anxiety about not being able to finish an entire series of my favorite book. And now I know why. There was a new Babysitter's Club book every other week with the help of... How was I gonna read all of the Sweet Valley High books? Francine Pascal was putting out 181 books with the help of... So this week, I had back-to-back -back meetings, a ton of emails to respond to, and a presentation to give. So guess what I did? How's that going? She's great, but I never see her. 